in the season, Lord yes. God. Lord yes. God, that words of encouragement will be poured Lord into them. Just them and uplift them. It is not easy sometimes to have God to take care of the sheep, to step yes, in Lord. place of the sheep, Lord God. To make sure, yes, Lord God, oh God, or or or. or, or God, standing in the gap yes. for the people of God to receive a word. Oh, God, for the people of God that, that need, Lord God, a, 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 a greater anointing, Lord God. Oftentimes, Lord God, they'll take the blows for standing in the gap. Yes. So, God, yes, we, oh God. God, just give them an outpouring of strength, yes. Lord God. Hallelujah. Of your anointing, yes, Father, Father God. Hallelujah. That, oh, God, where they are, they are getting rest and restrengthened for yes, the journey, Lord, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord. Empowered for the journey, Lord God. Yes, Lord. That as they go forth, they will do what thus saith the Lord, Lord. Jesus. So many, yes. so many leaders yes, are, are, are shying away from the truth, shying away from the gospel of yes, Jesus God. Christ, just to appease, Hallelujah. just to appease the congregation. Yes. When what we need yes, on truth, what yes. we need is a self yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Word and we Hallelujah. Have and first lady that are dedicated, no matter what the blowback may be. Oh God, they are dedicated to word, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. Lord to bringing forth yes, what oh God. God. Yes, Hallelujah. They know if God said it and God told them to do it, they will do it. Yes, so, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being so committed and dedicated to your word, dedicated to your truth, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that as you pour out your spirit, Lord God, you will bless them, Lord God. You will bless their storehouse. The mighty, bless their family, Lord God. I pray for a covering over their children, that as they take the forefront of the battlefield on our behalf, yes. oftentimes their children will be attacked. So I pray for a covering, Lord God. Yes. Cover them under your blood. Seal and seal. That yes. as they are on the, 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 the front lines of the battlefield, oh God, their children are protected. Their children are covered, Lord God. As they're on the front time front line casting out devils, oh hallelujah. Yes, and, oh God, hallelujah. Yes. That you will seal and protect their family. God, I thank you for them, Lord God. I thank, you. Yes. I thank you for the spirit. I thank you for all that you have done in them and in their ministry. And I pray for continual blessings, continual growth, Lord God. Hallelujah. And yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you in your holy and precious name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of Hallelujah. praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, Lord, we will shout unto you, oh God. Hallelujah. God in yes, our lives. Yes. Hallelujah. He saw it fit for us to be a part of this body. Amen. And we thank God for Pastor Milton and Amen. Thompson. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we are going to go into some the scripture for today. And we are going to ask Brother Shaikel, Brother Shaikel to read us the scripture. Right. Yeah. We, we know that pastor and first lady, they have been going through the book of Genesis, reading through the books of the Bible. So we ask uh, our Brother Shaikel to read through the next few chapters, which I believe we are starting at chapter 42 of Genesis. So we'll hand it over to Brother Shaikel as he will read the scripture reading. All right. Um, blessed to be here, everyone. Um, is my is my mic okay? It's All good. Right. Good. All right. So I'm at I'm at Genesis 42 and one, and I'm reading out of the King James version. So this is uh, now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, "Why do ye look upon one another?" And he said, "Behold." I have heard there is corn in Egypt. Go, go you down thither and buy for us then, that we may live and not die. And Jacob's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren. For he said, lest peradventure mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he, wait, Joseph was the governor of the land. And he, it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came 
and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan, to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said to them, Ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants, are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest this day was our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, That is it, that I speak unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. Ye shall not go forth hence except your youngest brother come hither. Verse 16. Send one of you and let him fetch your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all into ward three days. And Joseph said unto them, the third day, this do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, We are very guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul, and he besought us. And we would not hear, therefore, is this distress come upon us? And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not, Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself from them and wept, and returned them again, and, and, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the wet. And thus did he unto them. And they ladded their asses with the corn and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack, to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And when he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack, and their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? And they came unto Jacob, their father, into the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons 
of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me and take food for the famine of your household and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me, have you bereaved of my children? Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away? All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his brothers, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Am I going to 43? Okay. So, and the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass. When they had eaten up the corn, which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me, as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? And they said, The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have ye another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of these words, could we certainly know that he would say, bring your brother down? And Judah said unto Israel, his father, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou, and also our little ones. I will be a surety for them of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. For except we had lingered, surely now we have, surely now we have returned this second time. And their father Israel said unto them, if it is a must, if it is must, be so now, if it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hand and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sack, carry it again in your hand. Peradventure, it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise. Go again unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. 
If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. And the men took that present and they took double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the rulers of his house, bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon. And the men did as Joseph bade, and the men brought the men into Joseph, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, Because of the money that was returned in our sack at the first time, are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we came into the inn that we opened our sack, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. And other money have we brought down in our hand to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sack. And he said, Peace be to you. Fear not. Your God and the God of your father have, have given you treasure in your sack. I had your money. And he brought Simeon unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at, at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to the earth. And he asked them for their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man whom ye spake, is he yet alive? And they answered, And they answered, Thy servant, our father is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother, your younger brother, of whom he spake unto me? And he said, God, be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. And he sought where to weep. And he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, and set on, and set on bread. And he set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians, which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled at one another. And he took and set messes unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Yeah, amen, hallelujah. Amen. We thank the amen. Lord for his amen. word. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. What a powerful testimony that was. <laughs> what a powerful Ooh. story. Uh, hallelujah. 
brother Joseph. Yes, yes. And so that leads right into our testimony service. I know, I know that there is a burning testimony that someone must have to share with us this morning, to share yes. with the brethren about what God is doing in their life. Hallelujah. And so we open up the floor for testimonies, praise reports. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do we have any uh, any praise reports? I just I want to um, just testify to the greatness of God for being here. Um, my mom had uh, she had to get a a, a, a really bad um bunion removal surgery so it's been i've been running back and forth and she can't walk right now so getting her up and down the stairs has just been a, a a bit of a chore and getting her food and so you know um god has just been gracious with me and keeping my patience with things and um i had to do some scrambling to get here but i was thankfully happy to be on and um i had woken up with a a really bad headache and i think it was some sinus stuff going on so um i'm just really grateful that i can be here another week and and just take in the, the, the message and the word of god from wonderful people as yourself filling in um i just want to thank you to you know for taking time to help bless us here at this ministry because we you know this this is this, this is a great place to, to grow and i'm just so grateful that i found it in a time where things were closing down but the word of god was available here Amen. so i'm just I'm, I'm thankful for that like this it's changed my life my life has changed in in, in such short time mm. you know just by making a consistent effort to 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 be fed here by the word of god and i i i wouldn't go back to what i knew or for 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 one second for one second this is this is surely where god has placed my my path and my life before me and i'm just grateful for that so I want to give God a shout and say, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the Lord. Yes. Um, I must also agree with Brother Shai Cal. Um, yes. I moved to here last year, October. And so I was in search for a church. So I was going there, you know, and I wasn't connecting, you know, I wasn't feeling it. I went there, I wasn't feeling it. And somehow I, you know, Googled this church and I drove there with my kids. When we went, the church door was closed and I was pulling, I walked all around the church. And then I heard a shout, like, I think it was, um, well, Chelsea. Chloe, no, Chelsea at the time. And she was like, hello, we're coming. Um, I think they had a car problem that morning. So, you know, they were running a bit late, but thank God, you know, I thank God the day I found that church Amen. because I mean, it's a great, wow. thing. now churches are closed and, you know, yep. I was able to, every Sunday I'm here, like I didn't miss anything. You know, I thank God for that. Um, another Amen. thing again, Amen. um, I think it, sometime maybe two weeks ago, I asked a prayer for my dad because um, he did a CAT scan and they said that the, he had a tumor on the left side of his brain. All right. So his doctor um, referred him to a neurosurgeon. Okay. When he went to the neurosurgeon, he was like, so why did he send you here? <laughs> and I mean, I didn't look, I don't look at it. He said, you're not supposed to, you don't have a, a, a tumor on your brain. The tumor is in the right eye somewhere. And I'm like, wow. I didn't look at it like, oh, the doctor misread or anything. What I look at it, I said, that was God. Mm -hmm. I said, that was God because it's not on his brain. The brain is a very delicate, you know, and I thank God for that. I give him praise. And I must tell you that prayer works. Yes. Prayer yes. works Amen. all the time. And to God be the glory. 
to God be the glory for great things he has done. I just want to give him the praise. I just want to give him the honor. You know, I just want to thank him again because once you're alive, you wake up to see a new day. You wait, you should wake up with a praise in your mouth. Yes. Always wake up with a praise Amen. in your mouth. I'm in my right mind. You know, my, 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 my knees are working. You know, my hands, I'm functioning and I'm grateful for that. And I'm also thankful for my kids. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Morning. Hallelujah. I have a testimony. Um, but first, I would like to, you know, start by thanking God for life. Because if not for having life, I would not have been able to experience what I experienced during the course of this week, this month. All right. Now, I have um, had some strange relationships um, with um, my family. Right? My mom and my sister over the past maybe year, my mom or my sister face to face in about a year or just under a year, right? And uh, in, during the course of this past two weeks, right, working it out in a way that, you know, I was able to, um, are you hearing me? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I was able to work, he was working, able to work it out in a way that, you know, I was able to reach out and uh, to, to them, right? And yesterday was the first time I had seen them, um, my, my parent, my mom and my dad, uh, my mom and my sister, sorry, face to face, right? And it was a great experience. We were able to, you know, I mean, first time I had home cooked food in a year, which was wow. <laughs> but you know, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to to be able to start back to build that relationship with my family. Because if not for life, right, you know, I could have passed on, or my mother, or somebody could have passed on, and would not have had that opportunity to, you know, to 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 to, to build the relationship again. So I I am grateful to God. I'm grateful to God for life. And also, I'm grateful for, you know, being able to fellowship with this, this congregation, right? Because, I mean, I, I'm from Trinidad. Um, churches are closed. They only, recent, they only made an announcement from next week. Churches will be able to be open for um, under certain circumstances. So I'm, I'm grateful for this um, ministry, right? It has given me the opportunity to start back to build that next relationship and that relationship with God. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if you guys just heard him, but he says he's grateful for this ministry because it, it, it restarted his relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. The angels rejoice. Hallelujah. Mm. When brother Christian, hallelujah, yeah. rededicated his life to the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you will yeah. rejoice with him this morning? Amen. Amen. Who will yeah. declare that he has victory Thank Hallelujah. You, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love testimonies like that. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged by testimonies like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is a God who sits high and he looks low. He never forsakes us. He never forgets us. Hallelujah. He rekindles yes, relationships. Hallelujah. Yes, he sees our yes, heart. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, he yes, hears Lord. our cry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows Hallelujah. when there's a need and he feels that need. Hallelujah. And as some of us Hallelujah. have prayed this morning and we're searching and we're looking for things to fill that void. But I'm so glad that we know who is the only yeah. one that can fill that void. And he, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no relationship. Amen. Amen. He's a personal relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. And so I rejoice with you, my brother. Yes. I rejoice with you, my sister, Roxanne. I rejoice with you, my brother, yes. Chantel. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yes. We rejoice. We rejoice. We have it, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
Jesus. Amen, amen. And in that same mood of worship, same mood of thanksgiving, we are going to enter into a time of worship. So we're going to hand it over to Sister Roxanne as she leads us in worship. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. I surrender all to you. Everything. I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you, everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, I give myself away so you can use me i surrender all to you everything i give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I surrender all to you everything i give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing you are awesome in this place mighty god you are awesome in this place our father you are worthy of all praise to you, all oh, hands we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hands we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise. To you, our hands we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. He is awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. You 
are awesome in this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. I'll hand back over to um, Dr. Daly. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's awesome in this place. He is awesome in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can we just sing that one more time? <laughs> you are awesome, awesome in this place, place mighty God. God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you just need yes, a Lord. worship song. You need a song. Hallelujah. Song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The atmosphere. You need a song to grip your heart so that you can remember that God is truly awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's awesome. Hallelujah. In this Hallelujah. in this yes. temple. Hallelujah. I heard a testimony about health oh he is awesome in my body hallelujah yes, yes. i heard hallelujah. a testimony about relationships hallelujah. hallelujah he is awesome in my life hallelujah yes, yes. and amen. we glorify amen. him because he is forever awesome hallelujah in hallelujah. this earth hallelujah yes, yes. in heavenly hallelujah. places awesome in earthly hallelujah. places hallelujah. in the spiritual realm he is awesome in the hallelujah. battle in the victory, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, and yes. we glorify Him. Hallelujah! Glorify His name. We praise yes, this morning. Yes, Lord, we praise You, Lord. Praise you. Hallelujah! This morning, glory. Glory, 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 glory to God. Glory, magnify Your name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Instead, this afternoon, lift You up, oh God. Lift You up, oh God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank You, Father. Hallelujah. Awesome God. I glorify him. As we go over some announcements at this time, glory to Minister your Pastor, name. Can I say something? Yes, yes, Pastor. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. How, how are you doing? I'm not going to be long. I'm going to say a couple words and then I'm going to go on. Um, I'll give a testimony. Um, but before the testimony, I, uh, I want everybody to know that I appreciate everyone on this Zoom, I really do. I really, really appreciate everyone. Um, and I wanna thank the dailies um, tremendously. I wanna thank them tremendously. Um, you guys do not know what this family um, means to my wife and I, I mean, uh, you you know when you you come across some folks and you you just get that connection, you know. Just I ain't got to say nothing. I know we connected. Um, wow. That's the dailies. 
we we yeah. love this couple so much. They're a young couple, a beautiful couple. Um, they are a template mm -hmm. of what a child of God should look like in this season. They are a pattern and a patent um, on what the Christian walk should look like. And I did see little Lukey come across the screen. And that is beautiful to see that as they are ministering, the children are not far away. That is beautiful to see because we don't realize that they're hearing everything you're saying. So I, I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart to, uh, for being such an inspiration uh, to my wife and I. And I'll just give you guys a little snippet on how important uh, the dailies are to the Johnsons um, and the Binghamton church family as a whole. Um, several months ago, actually it was probably close to a year ago, I, uh, I contemplated changing jobs mm -hmm. and, and I was uncertain. So what I did, I, I looked and I listened for the voice of the Lord. And at times the voice of the Lord don't always come audibly. At times, um, you know it's the will of God because you have peace when you do something or there's certain things that line up. So with me, there's generally three ways I like to fact check to make sure something is the voice of God. One, do I have peace? Two, does it line up situationally? And three, is it in harmony with scripture? Um, those are the three ways that I generally look before I make a big decision. So probably close to a year ago, we, we my wife and I confided um, in the dailies that I was contemplating a shift in job, which was a very scary thing. Um, and not just the job, a shift in a career, a career where I was established, a career that I was known in, and in a career that I was very, very comfortable, almost to the point of complacent in that career. So there was, uh, so we mentioned it to the dailies and, um, um, Minister Tosh immediately jumped in and said, it's the Lord. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm like, how? <laughs> it was so accurate. It was so, it was push. yeah, it was actually a push. Um, when she said that, I was like, wow, because she was saying it as if she saw the whole picture. At the time, I could not see it. Mm -hmm. The pastor could not see it, y'all. But Minister Tosh is very prophetic. The prophetic rests heavily on her and she is accurate. So she said, the job I'm going for is political, which the nail has been struck by the hammer. It is 100% a political position. Um, and in the midst of all of that, my wife showed me a statement from my job. I've been there just about six months and I had not really paid attention, but my pay in six months was just about my pay for the whole year in my previous job. So, by me obeying the prophetic word, my salary doubled. I don't think y'all heard me. I said in six months, <laughs> I made what I made in a whole year at my previous job. And that was simply because, during the yeah, during the pandemic. And if I would get into the details on how they brought me over, it'll blow your mind because the things that they did, it was so prophetic. The things that they did to bring me into that job, they have never done before. They set a precedence bringing me in during the pandemic, having meetings with executives and accepting me in when no one in the country was being hired. This was at the apex of everything. Nobody was being hired. There was no movement. 
everything was shut down. There, you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, there were pandemic, there was no clerks in the office, but they made exceptions for me in a government job, which is almost against regulations, but they did it because the Lord made a way and it was Hallelujah. obeying uh, the voice of the Lord through prophetic words um, that led me to a place that I just could not see, but I felt that it was the Lord. I got two words of confirmation and I took the step and the place that they have me in now, I'm currently working on writing my own jobs description and probably even writing my own hours for work at a government job. This, this is unprecedented. So um, Minister Tosh, I want to encourage you. You are a woman of God. You hear from God. You hear from God clearly because had it not been for your words, I would have mm -hmm. still been in the same job, complacent and not advancing. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. I love y'all. You children of God. You hear from God. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for releasing the prophetic word. God bless you. I just want to piggyback on that real quick. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, I had said to my husband, you know, we got these financial burdens and obstacles we have been trying to jump over for many years. Um, and I said to him, I just feel like that the end of this year will be over that. Yeah. Now, I, there was no job change. There was no extra income. There was no new business going on. We were going back and forth to Binghamton. But I had said that. I want to say maybe January or February. Wow, um, that's right. And, and, I, and I just felt it. But I didn't know how it was going to happen. Um, sometimes you don't even know how to pray. But I just... Mm -hmm kept you know doing what whatever it is we were doing and then he got the put the opportunity again pushed at him come 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 change jobs and i think that was in march in uh, february march the pandemic started in march and then when sister tosh and us we were all talking and she was like go and i was very trepidatious you know the lord definitely speaks to me and and i'm and and things of that nature but this was next level and i thank god for her because my husband believes God speaks to me. And he, if he'd have followed me, he would have stayed at his other job. He, we would have played it safe. But Tosh was like, no, no, I could see this and I could see that. And I had to humble myself. I had to step out on faith and talking about really testing faith, really jumping out on nothing. And I'm basically jumping on the word that came through another source. And I just thank God uh, for that opportunity. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. Tosh is not perfect. She probably has some, some issues where she feels like I'm not worthy, but God don't look at all of that. He don't look at the worthiness. He looks at our willingness to serve him, willingness to speak for him, willingness to say something that might cause you embarrassment. Like how many of us want to be embarrassed for Jesus? Oh my God. And so I'm thankful because had it not been for, for that, I'm telling you, God is good. I'm moved to tears too, Tosh. Tosh. Go. It's just... I just thank God. And so now we're at a place where um, I can't say not money is not an issue, but that that jumping over the hurdle, that financial hurdle at the end of the year, I don't have a worry. I could now pick out the gray hairs again. <laughs> and I, thank God. I thank God. He's a provider. Some things we're trying to accomplish, two years savings, two years trying to save up. And now we're able to do it. And yeah. we listened and to heed. So whenever somebody speaks to you, it don't automatically assume it's from God, but don't automatically dismiss it. Weigh it. Weigh it. Let it lines up and take a step by faith and go move. I'm done. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Jesus. What a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What I love about those kind of testimonies is it's encouragement for us. Yeah. It's encouragement for us. A lot of times 
in church when we see our brother and sister yeah. being blessed. A lot of times there's animosity there, but we need to look at it as if the Lord can do it for them. He can do it for us too. Amen. It has to be encouragement on us that if God can bless them, it was a challenge, but God saw them through and they were blessed in the end for it. And so obedience, thank God. obedience, yes. AJ, obedience is greater than sacrifice. Amen. I mean, there's so Amen. much to say about when a word of the Lord, it comes and it, it can hit you like a ton Amen. of bricks because sometimes Amen. you don't want to do <laughs> what God is saying. This is what you must do, or you may doubt it, mm. but there's so much blessing in obedience. Yes. My Lord, my Lord, if you just obey the word of God, if you obey his statutes, if you obey what he's trying to direct your path to do, amen, hallelujah. Amen. It's so important for you to ask God to order your steps, Lord. So or, or, order my steps. So I don't do what I want to do. Yeah, I do what Lord. you have put in place for me to do. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for Pastor Milton. I thank God for Lady Johnson. I thank God for them because they poured into us so much as yeah, well. Yeah. There's so many parts of our journey. Even as we speak, we're in a season right now that Pastor Milton has definitely directed us. And so with every turn, we're always remembering that word that you gave us about three weeks ago. We're always sort of like thinking yes, like, okay, yeah. this is a season we, we're, we're we're being so cognizant because of the word that was spoken over us. And so we're grateful for that obedience. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so let's turn it over to Sister Roxanne. If there's any, any other additional announcements, if you just want to make them now. Hallelujah. Okay, um, for this week's announcement, uh, we have a Wednesday night Bible study and discussion. It's at 8 p.m. sharp, and it's by our own Pastor Milton Johnson. Um, last week was very great. It has been, you know, great discussions and, you know, deliverance service. Um, and I, what I realized is that Pastor Milton, he, he, breaks it down, he dissects the word. And I assure you that when you leave, you will leave not understanding, you'll understand something. Because every week I leave, I learn a lot. Um, just invite your friends, invite your neighbor, family, just send them the link. You know, if you want the truth, if you want no compromise, just join us on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Um, Friday night, we have our youth service. Um, this has been postponed, though, until further notice from First Lady Johnson. Um, this is also another learning experience for the kids. I know my kids really enjoy it. Um, giving. Um, if you'd like to give back to this ministry, there are four ways to give. Um, all charitable contributions can be made via um, Cash App, um, which will be placed in the chat later. Um, it's dollar sign MHJ Koga. C O G O P, or through PayPal, um, Easy Tithe, or it can be mailed. I'm going to put this in the chat for you for later. And mm, these are the announcements for this week. Man, all right. Thank you, Sister Roxanne. So, again, we want to encourage you to give into this ministry as, as the Lord has laid upon your heart, as He pours into you. Uh, we ask that you pour into this ministry. Amen. And <clears throat> as we're getting ready, I'm going to ask Sister Roxanne, could you, um, as my wife prepares, could you sing one more song for us as we get ready to enter into, an, into a time of receiving the word? We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, Lord, what will we do? Wanting you more each day to show us your perfect way. There is no other way that 
that we can leave. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, Lord, what will we do? Wanting you more each day to show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can leave. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now Brother AJ would like to do a, um, a rendition. Um, at this time, just get your hearts and your minds ready to receive from the word of God today. Um, he's been practicing since Friday. Uh, I don't get to see him around the piano a lot. And he just wants to play for you guys and just let the Holy Spirit just touch your heart this morning. Um, let your heart get ready to receive a word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God, we come before you right now in this moment. And we ask that you fill this place, Holy, Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray that your presence will be embarked upon everyone in this Zoom. Father God, I pray that you will stretch your loving arms around us, oh God. I pray that your word will change our hearts today, Father God. Father God, I pray that we will be hearers of this word, Father God. I pray that we will be doers of this word, Jesus. I pray that, oh Lord, that your, your hearts, oh God, the hearts of your people, God, will be pierced, oh God, oh Lord, to, to run into action, oh God. Lord, I pray that they will be uplifted. I pray that there will be a message of hope, a message of peace, oh God, a message of healing, a message of deliverance. God, I pray that your people are touched this afternoon. Father God, I pray that there will be an atmosphere, oh God, that is conducive. So I pray over the ears of your people. I pray over the eyes of your people. I come against distraction, Father God. And I pray that there will just be a smooth anointing. Oh God, a swift anointing. God, oh God, a, a touching anointing, Lord. So that your word will go forth boldly and clearly to all who will listen, to all who will hear your word says he that hath an ear let him hear the word of the lord thank you jesus congregation i commit to you brother aj daly i pray that you will receive him under the care of the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah can we give god a praise can we just Amen. take a Lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just take a Hallelujah. moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come Let on. Let's be the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift you up Hallelujah. to your word, Lord. Yes, your Lord. Deliver up your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Timely word. This hour, speak to us. man of God. We give you praise. We receive, Lord God. We make our hearts receptive for your word. Hallelujah. We make our minds receptive for your word. We receive from you, Lord God. We open ourselves up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your Hallelujah. way, God. Redirect, Lord God. If it's not, Lord, what you want to say, shift it right now in the name of Jesus. But we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the topic, the message that the Lord has given me for you today is entitled The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. And as I unravel what the Lord has given me, I, I ask that you remain prayerful, that we can unwrap what the Lord has for us today. Amen. And so I want to first start by putting a picture, an image in our minds. When you think about your favorite picture of how you see Jesus in your mind, what do you see? What do you see in your mind? Some of us, our favorite depiction of Jesus is when he's sitting with the children, teaching them and instructing them. For some, it may be Jesus feeding the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. Or maybe the most prolific, the most famous scene is Jesus dying on the cross. But we forget that Jesus also prayed until his tears became blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. We forget that Jesus often confronted the scribes and the Pharisees and challenged them on several occasions. We're often remiss by the fact that Jesus was savvy enough not to expose Judas at the Last Supper, knowing that he was against him. And also, this is the same Jesus that rebuked Satan and told him to get behind him after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the same Jesus that calmed the raging seas during the storm. He went from sleeping to calming the raging seas. Oh, hallelujah. There are so many facets. There are so many characteristics of Jesus, but we often only emphasize him as being the lamb, the peacemaker, the quiet and subtle savior. Though that may be true, I'm here to tell you today to emphasize that Jesus was also the lion of the tribe of Judah. The Bible declares that he was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is victorious. And that is the depiction of Jesus that I want to present to you today. 
and how that should reflect on us. The Bible tells us in James chapter 1, verses 23 to 24, it says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. The NIV uses the word mirror. So it's like you're looking into a mirror, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth that manner of man he was. In this scripture, James is showing the word of God as a mirror. Now a mirror gives us a reflection of how we look in a true mirror and not the distorted mirrors like we see in the circus where it'll show us with a long face or a short face. But in a true mirror, it gives a reflection of how we really look. In the same sense, James is saying in the scripture, he is saying that the Bible gives us a reflection of how we look. It shows us our character as it reflects against the Bible. Oh, let me let me explain that further. It's not about how we look physically, but it gives a reflection of how our character looks in reflection to the word of God, in reflection to the Bible. How does our character look in the mirror and does it reflect the word of God? Now, I know we're on a Zoom call. I know some of us are in our PJs. Some probably woke up and joined the Zoom call right in our PJs. But before this pandemic, I know many of us were probably one of the best dressed in church. We had our suits, we had our ties on. We made sure we looked the part. Ladies probably had the designer dresses, the shiny shoes, to make sure that you looked the part. We were in our church views dressing to kill, as some may say. But while we were looking the part on the outward appearance, God was looking on the inward and he was asking, compared to the word of God, how do you look? When compared to my character, how do you look? In the mirror, do you see how you look? Do you see you, the physical you? Or are you looking at your character? Is your character who you are? In fact, your integrity, is your integrity who you are? How do you look when compared to the word of God? And I'm not talking about, again, what we have on our physical appearance, but I'm talking about how we look inwardly. I'm talking about our character. James was talking about our character when he was talking about being reflected in a mirror in the scriptures. So what I'm trying to say to you today is that often you see we live in a world where we have filters in every picture that we present, whether on Snapchat, on Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram, we're enhancing every photo that we have because we want the world to see the best version of ourselves. We want them to see us in a particular version. We want them to see the best version of our selfie. We want them to see a particular version of ourselves. We show people the reflection of the outside, but God wants to reflect on the inside. He wants to, us to reflect our character. In James chapter one, verse 23 and 24, that's what the Bible was talking about. Not how we look inwardly, not that we can play the part of a Christian, not that we can play the part and look the role of a believer, but how are we inwardly? How is our character? How is our heart? Now, as believers, our character should reflect the character of Christ. So that means our demeanor, how we handle things, how we address things should be Christ-like, which is in essence how Christ would behave. Now, we've all heard the tag WWJD, the hashtag, what would Jesus do? And many of us say, well, I'm not Jesus, so I can't behave like him. There's a song that from an artist that I often listen to because he's comedic and he says, try Jesus, not me because I fight. And basically what he's saying is you need to try Jesus because if you try me, I will lay hands on you. If you cross me, I will fight you. And it may be funny and may be hilarious, but the truth is that's how many of us walk our Christian life. We, we think it's okay to say that Jesus is God. Jesus is all knowing. He is all powerful, but it's okay for us to act and behave a certain way. That's the new response to the unchristian behavior. But I want to combat that today in the name of Jesus. I want to first declare that I'm a patriot. And by a patriot, I'm not talking about a patriot of this country. I'm not talking about, you know, a, a, a patriot of myself. But what I'm talking about is I'm a patriot of the kingdom of God. I'm an ambassador of the most high God. That's right. I am a patriot for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And for those who would want to say to yourselves, I'm not Jesus. 
so I don't have to behave like him. I'm not God, so I don't have to adhere to the different things that God would do. I'm telling you as a patriot, as an ambassador in the, in the kingdom of God, I'm telling you as a Christian, you are misrepresenting the kingdom of God. You are misrepresenting the kingdom of God. If your dedication, if your urge, if your satisfaction is not being Christ-like, if your actions and your choices and the activities, if they're misrepresenting the kingdom of God, I'm letting you know to stop. Stop misrepresenting the kingdom of God. If you do not reflect Christ, yet you claim to be a Christian, stop. Stop. S-T-O-P. Stop misrepresenting the kingdom of God. If you're going to profess to be a Christian, then be a Christian. Be a Christian in the mirror. Be a Christian in your character. So what I'm saying is don't just look like a Christian. Don't just dress like a Christian, but be a Christian. Oh, come on. Sometimes I just want to roar like a lion. Every time I see believers professing that they are Christians, professing that they are believers, but their character does not line up with the manhood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. And I believe that God is calling us to be patriots, to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. And I believe that we need to, oh, just like the Bible says, we need to have a raw, we need to have a boldness in ourselves to proclaim the spirit of the Lord, to proclaim the kingdom of God, to proclaim right and wrong. Oh, hallelujah. To proclaim that the King of Kings and the Lord of Glories is the Most High God, that He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and His boldness. Yes, He's a God of grace. Yes, He's a God that gives grace, grace but He has wrath too. He is a lion. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is like a lion, and His wrath will come down on us if we are not aligned with Him. Sometimes we need to shake up the enemy's camp, like we're lions, just begin to shout out, forget the spirit of timidity. Right now, I break every chain of timidity in this place where we feel like it's okay to just live in fear, to have chains of fear placed on us. We are lions. If we are to reflect the image of Christ, if we're supposed to be like the image of Christ, if Christ is supposed to reflect on us when we look in the mirror, when we look against the Bible, Christ was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He had a boldness to him. That means we need to have a boldness to him. We need to be like lions. I fear no evil for I serve a God who is a lion. Oh, hallelujah. Why We need to shout with the voice of triumph, not, whis not whisper with the spirit of defeat, but shout with the voice of triumph because who we're serving is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And I want to I wanna dissect this word for you as we get into it, and you'll see the connection as we go throughout the word. But the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, and one of the elders said unto them, weep not. The Bible says, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Having seen seven horns and seven eyes, there are seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. In this scripture, you see Jesus as the lamb in verse six. And then you see Jesus as the lion in verse five. So Jesus was both the lamb and the lion. The scripture is telling us, cry not, fear not, worry not, weep not. Why? Because the lion is in control. He is the lamb and the lion. And so often we depict Jesus as just the lamb of God but he is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus was the peaceful lamb that died for our sins, but he's also the triumphant lion that overturned the tables in the temple when it turned into a marketplace. You have to understand the difference when you're supposed to be assertive and when you're supposed to be peaceful. Jesus knew the difference. Some of us have a really kind and humble spirit, and that is good. That is wonderful, but the enemy will use that against us. So we have to understand we have to understand when it is time to turn on the lion, the lion needs to come out. Oh, hallelujah. We can't allow the enemy to walk all over us. So right now, I want us to welcome the lion, to bring the lion out. Oh, hallelujah. Bring the lion out in whatever circumstance you have been too passive in. Bring the lion out. Don't stand on the sidelines anymore with your situation. You need to bring the lion out in the name of Jesus. The enemy has been doing way too much, and the lion needs to come out. Not tomorrow, not next week, 
Not a year from now, but today, right now, in your praise, the lion needs to come out. The boldness of Christ needs to come out. It needs to come out in the name of Jesus. Now, unfortunately, too many Christians have been taught that it's wrong to be angry, but the Bible says be angry and sin not. The struggle, I struggle with the same belief because it's not easy to bring the line out. I don't want to bring the line out. It's too scary. Sometimes we don't want to cause ruffles or cause riffles. We don't want to cause any trouble. It's scary to stand up for something, knowing that there's going to be opposition. It's scary knowing that there's going to be naysayers, people that will say you won't last, that the negative thoughts that they will tell you, the negative thoughts that you even tell yourself, that you speak to yourself, that, okay, I don't want to cause any ruffles or any feathers. Someone else will do it. I don't want to cause anything. I don't want to cause any drama. Someone else will stand up. The fear that your boldness will be misinterpreted, knowing that what you're saying is right and what you're doing is right, but you know that you're going to face opposition. But God is saying in all of that, I still require you to be the lion. You've got to bring out the lion too. When it comes to standing up for righteousness, when it comes to standing up for what I need you to stand up for, you have to bring out the lion. Yes, you may be humble. Yes, you may be quiet. Yes, you may be reserved. But the lion has got to come out too. Jesus was both the lamb and the lion. Within our own circles of friends at school, bring out the lion. On your job, bring out the lion. We have been too yes. passive going along with, every, with, with what everyone else is doing, not one of the ruffled feathers. God is saying, bring out the lion and stand up for Jesus Christ. Glory. We've been too passive trying to fit in, trying to fit in with Christians, trying to mingle in with the world and, and do what the world does so we don't be seen as, 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 as confrontational. God is saying, bring out the lion. Hey. We've been too passive as Christians. We need to bring out the lion in the name of Jesus. Learn to say no. Learn to stand for Christ. Learn to pray in front of your co-workers. Who cares what they think? Bring out the lion. Learn to not be the one drinking at happy hours just to blend in. But speak the truth of God. Learn to be light in darkness. Bring out the lion. Oh, hallelujah. The devil is a liar. If he will try and make us think that we have to be timid at every point. God, Jesus was both lamb and lion. We need to reflect Christ. And sometimes we need to bring out the lion, the boldness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, we have associated negativity with anger. But the scripture says, be angry and sin not. Many of us, we've messed up with the sin part. We get angry and then we sin too. And that's the problem. But we have got to practice bringing out the lion. Bring the lion out. When you see, when you learn to bring out the lion and control the lion, you know how to use it. You know the right times. You know when the Holy Spirit will tell you it's time for boldness. It's time to step up. But often what we do is we don't practice bringing out the lion. We don't practice what the Bible reflects. And often when we do bring it out, it's out of control. We can't tame it. So we are, we anger and we sin. But God is telling us we need to practice to bring out the lion. We need to practice to be bold. You have to practice to be bold for your God. And when you practice it, you will know how to use it and when to use it. Even it's just like the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Unless you practice the gifts, unless you work those gifts in your life, it will not be strengthened. You will not be able to control and know when it's the spirit of God and when it's a false spirit. We've got to practice bringing out the lion. And when you practice it, you will know how to use it. The reflection in the mirror is that God is both lamb and lion. Jesus is both lamb and lion. And if we are to reflect him, we need to replicate that character. Yes, we have the lamb, but we have to bring out the lion too. Don't forget about the lion. And so as I go into the scriptures, the Bible tells me in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, the, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, what we have to see today is in Proverbs 2, verse 1, it's, it's powerful. It's a confirmation of the truth that I'm trying to bring out. It says that the wicked flee when no one is pursuing it. But righteous are the righteous are as bold as a lion. In other words, there's a correlation between wickedness and fear on one hand and righteousness and courage on the other hand. And the gospel message is a message about how wicked people can get right with God through Jesus Christ so that they can have the righteousness that makes them as bold as a lion. So let's begin to, yes. to straighten our thinking by removing any misunderstandings. When the Bible in Proverbs says that the wicked flee 
and no one is pursuing and the righteous are as bold as a lion. It does not mean that there are no bold, wicked people. There are people who are bold with their wickedness. They know they're sinning. They know they're doing wrong and they're bold with it. And it also doesn't mean that the righteous are timid. Every righteous person is timid. That's not what the scripture is saying. By no means the saying that there's no righteous people that are timid, that are not timid. You have righteous people who are not walking into their calling who are timid. But what it means is that in general, there is something about wickedness that leads to fear and something about righteousness that leads to boldness. What it's saying is that the wickedness in people makes them flee from the presence of justice in the presence of the lion, even when no one is pursuing them. So how does that happen? How do you flee when no one is pursuing you? It happens because we have a bad conscience. Have you ever been in a place where you're in a conversation, you start defending yourself before anybody starts to even criticize you? That's because there's a sign of a guilty conscience there. Before anyone even starts to chase us, we're running. Have anyone, and I've done this before, and I probably shouldn't say it with Pastor Milton being on the phone, but have you ever been speeding down a highway and the minute you see a cop car, you slow down? Why are you slowing down? Why are you slowing down when you see the cop car? Why? Because there's a guilty conscience. You know that you've been speeding. And even though the cop may not even have his radar on you, even though the cop may not be watching you, you slow down because there's a guilty conscience there. You see, we flee when we're not being pursued because we have a bad conscience. And there are enough bad things stored up that we've done that a voice inside of us tells us that even if there's no one else chasing us, even if there's no one there, that there's someone chasing us, that there's a guilt and a fear that we have to have. You see, guilt is the parent of fear. Our conscience creates the pursuer that ought to be there even when there's no one pursuing us. And if you have guilt, if you have a bad conscience, that is what's preventing you from bringing out the lion. To put it simply, you feel guilty about standing up for something because you would be a hypocrite if you did. You feel guilty about standing up on the word of God. You feel guilty about standing up when people are doing something that you know is wrong because you know it would be hypocritical if you did. I want to tell you this morning, I want to tell you today, you have got to get rid of that. You've got to get rid of that sin. Some of us can't be bold because we're living in sin. And that's the truth. That's the God-given truth. Like the scripture says, we run. Instead of standing up for truth, we run. Instead of standing up for righteousness, we run. Because we're guilty, we feel guilty. And the thing about guilt is that guilt can't always be seen in the mirror, but guilt can always be seen in your actions. So you may not, you may not be bold on certain issues because you have guilt inside. So in the mirror, you may look bold, right? You look like you're standing up for certain causes. But inside there's guilt, you're filled with guilt. And that's what the scripture is trying to extract and teach us today. That we feel like we're being pursued because there's guilt there. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous, let me repeat that, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So like the apostle Paul, I wanna encourage you to lay aside everything that so easily besets us, every sin and walk like a lion. Oh, hallelujah. Walk like a lion, talk like a lion, roar like a lion, live like a lion, praise like a lion. Let us pray on our knees like lions. Why am I saying this? Why am I, I I'm speaking about being like a lion? Because I, I, know how, I know how I feel. I feel like during this time, there are movements that are going on, but we don't see the people of God moving for Christ. We see different movements going on, but I don't see the church in movement. I, the church needs a movement. That We need a movement of prayer in schools. We need a movement of Christian education to be back in the schools with everything that's going on in this world. We, the church needs to have a voice. Where is our boldness as the body of Christ? Where is our lion roar? Where is it with everything going on in this world, with our president, with his comments, the disgusting comments that he often says, the demeanor in which he speaks, where is the body of Christ? Where are the leaders saying what is wrong and what is right? Where is the body of Christ? Where is our boldness? Where is our lion roar? We have to have a boldness to say that this is wrong. 
Yes, I'm praying for you, Mr. President. I'm praying for our leaders, but we call out sin when it's sin. We call out unrighteousness when it's unrighteousness. We call out wrong behavior when it's wrong. We need to stand up for righteousness. And according to the scripture, if we're not the righteous being bold as a lion, then we're the wicked running away with guilt. Is the church guilty? Is the church unsure in itself because of matters that the church have been dealing with? Where is our voice as the people of God? Where is our voice on these matters? Oh, hallelujah. In response, let us rise up. Let us rise up and rise up to the occasion and be the lions that God has called us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up to be the lion that God has called us to be. For far too long, the church has been sitting dormant. Even, even when you look at the civil rights movement and everything going on, it's been decades since the church has stood up. And now we have, have what I call antichrist stepping up and standing up where the church should be stepping in. Where we have demonic forces standing up for justice or the appearance of standing up for justice, but where the church should be standing up, we have taken a back seat. We don't have the spirit of boldness, but we have the spirit of timidity. God was the lamb and the lion. The lion must roar sometimes. Boldness must come out and call sin, sin. Call wickedness, wickedness. And call out righteousness for what it is. Hallelujah. And one characteristic about the lion that I think is important. Hallelujah. One characteristic that I think is important to point out that is how a lion looks. Lions live in groups and they function in what they call prides. And the sign of a distinct leader in the group of lions in the pride is the size of his mane. So Im imagine a lion and you see like the, the long beard that goes down for the male lions. The size of the mane depicts who the leader is of the group. The lion with the largest mane is immediately identified as the leader of the pride. Therefore, how you look as a lion matters. Your reflection as a lion matters. The lion with the largest mane often deters predators merely by just how they look. This communicates to me one thing. Your character will ultimately reflect on your on the outside. So if you are truly a lion in character in the inside, if you are truly of good character in the inside, it's going to reflect on the outside. And if you have a bad character on the inside and you're pretending and you're doing the facade of being a Christian, eventually it will show up on the outside it will show up and that's why we have to look at the inward man and that's why as the scripture says search me oh god and see if there be any wicked ways in me know my heart lord god you see that i want to change you see the anger in me i want to get rid of it lord you see the bitterness in me i want to get rid of it lord Lord, you see the hurt and the pain in me that I often lash out on others. Lord, I want to get rid of it. Search me, oh God, and Jesus. see if there be Hallelujah. any wicked way in me. And cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my heart, Lord God. Jesus. Another thing that I, wanna, I want us to understand is that lion leaders recognize other lions and respect other lions. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. You see, there's a saying that often if you find yourself in a lion's den, you have to crawl out slowly. But I believe that saying only applies when you are not a lion. Because if you are a lion too, you don't have to crawl out slowly. When we look at the Bible, we look at the story of Daniel in the lion's den. The scripture says that the angels of God kept the lion's mouth closed. But you know what I believe as well? I think that even though the angels kept the lion's mouth closed, I believe that God made Daniel have the look and appearance of a lion to the other lions. So much so that Daniel slept and woke up with them. Think about it. Daniel was in the lion's den and the lions left him alone. It wasn't because they were godly lions. They were normal hungry lions seeing flesh to eat. But the angel of the Lord kept their mouths shut. Just like Daniel, you may have some enemies plotting against your destruction. You may have some enemies that want to throw you in the lion's den. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in the lion's den? Have you ever been in a situation where your onlookers are waiting for your destruction? Coworkers trying to cause you to lose your job, passive aggressively working against you. Have you ever been in the lion's den? 
church members trying to run you out of the church where you have received your salvation? Have you been in the lion's den? Family members working to push every single button that you have. Have you been in the lion's den? In Daniel chapter 6, verses 16 through 24, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and was told that his God should protect him. But when I look at the story, even though Daniel was surrounded by lions, it was as though they were revering him as a lion. The word revere means to look at someone in a certain way. So for example, I look at Pastor Milton as a shepherd. I revere him and look at him in a certain way. In this story, it illustrates that yes, the lion's mouth was shut, but the angels allowed the lion to revere Daniel as a lion himself. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that the very enemies that plotted against you will revere you as a lion, oh hallelujah. Not by your own strength, but in Christ Jesus who will empower you, oh hallelujah. Just like how Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, the men, the, the king's men had Daniel thrown into the lion's den. They wanted to see him succumb. They wanted to see him die. And that lion, Daniel came out looking like a lion. They had to respect him. They had to revere him as the lion that he was. Why? Because his depiction, the way he carried himself, his boldness was that of a lion. Those lions had to respect Daniel in the lion's den. So much so that they slept with him and they both slept together as he was one of their own. Imagine hungry lions sleeping in a den with a human being, their male. Oh, hallelujah. You got to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reflection. How are we reflecting Christ? How are we being seen? I'm talking about the man in the mirror. This message, what I'm trying to bring to you today is about being a lion and the lamb. God was both lamb and lion. And there's situations where we're going to go through where we don't feel like bringing out the lion. We don't even feel like we're the lion. We don't feel like we're the king of the jungle. We don't feel like we're the righteousness of Christ. But you have got to bring out the lion. You still have to check Satan and let him know who you are and whose you are. You have, you have got to let Satan know that you are the righteousness of Christ. And even if you may not feel like a lion in this moment, activate your faith and speak those things as if they are in the name of Jesus. Lose that spirit of timidity. Hallelujah. Lose that spirit of fear and take on the spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. We've got to take on the spirit of the lion. Let your inner lion roar. Have the boldness of Christ. Have the boldness of Christ. Hallelujah. It's okay to be humble sometimes, but sometimes we need to let the timidity go and stand up for Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The, script, and what, the scripture says that even Satan was like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Like. Like a roaring lion like. seeking whom he may devour. Now, I find this interesting because the Bible depicts Jesus as the lion and the lamb. So my question is, what's the difference between Satan, the lion, and Jesus, the lion and the lamb? I find it ironic. And as I was searching the Bible, I realized both Jesus and Satan are depicted as lions in the Bible. So I asked myself, why would Jesus and Satan be referred to as a lion? The Bible says that Satan is like a lion in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and refers to Jesus as a lion in Revelations 5, verse 5. But then God gave me the revelation that Jesus as the lion became the lamb for us. But Satan, like a lion, would never humble himself and become a lamb for us. But Jesus, oh hallelujah, our savior, our Jesus, he was nailed to the cross, he was hung to the tree, and he died for us, for our sins, for our transgressions. Satan wanted us to fall into sin, but Jesus died for our sin. See, Satan is like a lion, but he won't give us the victory like Jesus, the true lion, oh hallelujah. Satan wanted us to die, but Jesus wanted us to live and be free from sin. So why is Jesus called the lion and the lamb? Why are the two? Because I mean, they're kind of against each other. The lamb is, is quiet and the lion is loud in his roar. The reason why is because Jesus as the lion gets the victory through the tactics of the lamb. During the time, during the time of the scriptures, the lion is seen as a symbol of victory, of being victorious. And the lamb is seen as a dependent creature that was used sacrificially. 
before Jesus walked this earth, he was known as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But in order for Christ to allow us to be saved and to be victorious as lions ourselves, he had to come to earth as a lamb so that we could be lions. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2 verse 7 to 8 that he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. There's a song that says he could have called 10,000 angels. He was the lion of the tribe of Judah. He had all the power. He had all the authority. Yet in order for us to be saved, he humbled himself and became the sacrificial lamb who took away the reproach of sin for his people. Because he became the land, we can be lions. Because he became the lamb, we can be lions. We can be victorious. Therefore, if we are ambassadors of Christ on this earth, if we are filled with the same power that Christ had when he walked this earth, if we are lions through the bloodshed of Jesus the lamb, let us walk as lions. Let us talk as lions. Let us roar as lions. There's a song that I used to always sing by Skillet. It's, it goes, I'm just gonna read the lyrics to you. Everywhere we go, the battle has been won. We know he, go, he goes before us. So we're talking, so we're taking hold in faith with every step we take. We know we will rise victorious. If we're gonna fly, we're gonna fly like eagles, arms out wide. If we're gonna fear, we're gonna fear no evil. We will rise. By the power we will go. By your spirit, we will be bold. If we are gonna stand against giants, if, if we are gonna walk, we are gonna walk as lions. People of God, God is calling us in this season to walk as lions, to talk as lions, to live as lions. There's a boldness that has to come out of the people of God that no matter what will be going on in this world, we will stand up for righteousness. Can I tell you something? The times are not gonna get easier. Lord. As we go on and progress in this society, yes, there's going to be more animosity towards the people of God, oh, towards God. Christians. Oh, Let God. me be clear, towards the remnant of Christ standing up for righteousness. Because there'll be a, 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 a like lion, right? Satan was like a roaring lion. There'll be people who are false prophets who claim to be walkers of faith, who claim to be people of God and are leading people astray and will align with the things of this world. But the Bible is calling us to be lions. We reflect Christ to be lions, to stand up in boldness, to stand up for the word of God, to stand up with the testimony of faith saying that thus saith the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You have to understand the very prophets, the very prophets in the Bible were never praised. If you look, they were always ostracized, yet they still stood up for the word of God. People of God, in this season, we need to stand up for the word of God. Stand up for righteousness. Who cares what the world may say? Who cares what our friends, our co-workers may say? Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for boldness and be the lions that we are called to be. No longer will we walk in timidity, but stand up for righteousness. And I believe the Lord is, is bringing me to a time of prayer. We're in this season that he'll give us the boldness that we need. He'll give us the courage that we need. Too often, for too long, the church has been timid yes. by the sidelines, allowing the world to go rampant and do all these other nonsense. It's time for us as the people of God to step out. In fact, God has removed us from the four walls to bring us to this place. We are no longer in the four walls of the building. God has brought us to a place where we have no choice but to stand out and be bold for him. We have no choice. This is the season where those who are like Christ or, 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 or anti-Christ will fall off because they won't have what's sustaining them to keep their faith. And those who are the remnant of Christ, those who are the lions in this season will stand up in boldness for Christ. And so as I pray, I'm asking, Lord, as I come before you, I pray that you touch the body of Christ. Touch the people, Lord, that will be bold, Lord God. No longer will we walk in a spirit of timidity, Lord God. No longer will we run away and hide and, and quiver, but we will stand up in boldness. No matter what 
the circumstances may be, no matter what, Lord God, the repercussions may be. Lord, we stand on the people of faith that stood up for righteousness. The people, Stephen, who was martyred for righteousness. Even when we look at the at the more modern church, the Fox's Book of Martyrs, we see believers who, even if it cost them their life, they stood up for righteousness. We are not in a country yet where we are being slaughtered for standing up for righteousness. So God, I pray that in this season, you'll give us the strength and the boldness to stand up for righteousness, to stand up for your word, Lord God, that you will empower us, Lord God, to do what is right. When we see someone hurting, we'll call it out. Oh God, not when it favors us, not when it aligns with our agenda, but regardless, Thank you, Jesus. we will stand up for righteousness. I pray right now, Father, that you will touch your people. Give them a boldness right now. Hallelujah. A spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let them feel free in their boldness. Who the spirit of the Lord has set free is free indeed. We release them from the spirit of timidity. We release them from the spirit of fear. And we allow them to walk in the spirit of boldness. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the lion come out. Yes. I walk out boldly today. Hallelujah. I am bold. I am boldly covered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank for that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For the word. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, amen, amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, every spirit. Hallelujah. In the name of Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. In your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. The lion in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me today. Bless your name. Activate Jesus. the lion in the us today. Hallelujah. 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 the lion in me today, oh God. Glory. Thank you. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. As the spirit of the Lord is saying, if there's anyone today that needs prayer, because specifically because you've been so timid in an aspect Hallelujah. of your life. Glory. Hallelujah. You've been confused because you felt like you've almost felt as if woo, your humility meant that you meant you meant that you had to say nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your humility meant that you had to do nothing. God wants to activate your lion today. Hallelujah. He wants you to stand up for what's yeah, right today. Yeah. Glory. You need prayer. Hallelujah. For prayer. something that you've taken a back seat on hallelujah and god is saying no 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 this is a lion roar hallelujah you are gonna have to pray about this hallelujah you are gonna have to go into interceding about this hallelujah yes, yes. you're going to have to speak not to the person but to the spirit in the spirit uh -huh. yes. Yeah. You're going to have to look into the eye and know that you're not just dealing with a person, but you're dealing with a principality. My God. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm speaking to someone this Hallelujah. morning. I'm speaking to you this morning. Hallelujah. My and if God. you need to lift up your hand, hallelujah. 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 We are going to call for those who need to be called with God. their faith. Yes. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God is not calling you to be on the benches, hallelujah, yes. on the bleachers when it comes to the work of his kingdom. Yes. Do you know that sometimes your boldness will be a testimony that will bring others? 
hallelujah. Mm. You'll be in a, in a conference meeting and where they thought that no one would, you know, even oppose what is going on. No one would even say, oh, no, 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 no. We can't do this. This is wrong. You do it and you become a spiritual leader mm. to someone who, who now respects you because you stand up for righteousness. Yes, yes. Amen. And conversation with that person you let them know about the goodness of hallelujah. jesus christ hallelujah Bless your name. Life. Hallelujah. god My wants god. to use your boldness mm. god wants to use your activated lion yes. as a testimony yes. glory to your name so if you hallelujah mm. need to activate your lion in any aspect of your life raise your hand in this moment glory hallelujah. glory glory Glory, 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 glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah! 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 Bless your name, Jesus. God, Father God, we Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We pray for our brothers. Hallelujah! We pray for our sister in Christ. Hallelujah! Who has raised their hand, Father God? I just pray over every aspect of their life right now, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Your word went through. Hallelujah! And it has pierced their heart. Father God, Lord, I pray that whatever situation, Lord, hallelujah, that you need to show them a scripture to read. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Let them have that scripture read over that situation right now. Yes, Lord. Give them revelations about how they need to address this situation, Father God. I pray that their lion, oh God, will give them wisdom. Hallelujah. That you will rise up. Jesus. And that you will allow them, oh God, to walk bold in your footsteps. You will be, hallelujah, an example to them. The same Jesus that overturned the tables, hallelujah, hallelujah. will be the same Jesus in their life, hallelujah. Lord, thank you, that will reject thank anyone so unlike Jesus. Complicity is sometimes a yes, yes Father yes, God. Yes, Forgive yes. us for being complicit. Yes, Lord. Forgive yes, Lord. us, hallelujah, for seeing My things God. that are un. And saying and doing nothing, Father God. Hallelujah. Show us how to activate the spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That the physical victory will be manifested. In Hallelujah. Show us how oh, to man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Victorious warfare Hallelujah. in these situations, oh God. Show us. Hallelujah. A prayer warfare now, yes, oh yes, God. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Direct Lord. God, give us specific instructions. Mighty God, I think I even heard the Lord say, even when it comes to the shoes you wear, Father God, you need to anoint the very shoes that you put on your feet. Hallelujah. Anoint them in the blood of Jesus. Your obedience in this season, hallelujah, will dictate the elevation of where God wants to take you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, Glory. Hallelujah. That you shall go boldly. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humility is not humility. Fake humility is not humility. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. The humble yes, Lord. shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Must be true. Hallelujah. Your humbleness must be true. Your humbleness must come. Hallelujah. From a stance. Oh, hallelujah. Of his throne. You are humble. You are you, you are humble. Oh, hallelujah. To the voice of God. And even if he tells you to do something that you don't want to do, yes, you yes. humbly accept it. Amen. I will do. I will do. What you ask of, oh God. And lie not. Hallelujah. Say, hallelujah, what the Bible says. You humbly stand up for righteousness. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And you walk. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord. You walk in the steps, the footsteps of Jesus Christ. He has trailblazed away from there's nothing that we are going through that Christ has not gone through. And so we know we can be victorious. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name, Bless Jesus. Your name, Jesus. Glory Lord, Jesus. Lord, Jesus. Lord, Lord. Yes. Yes. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah has to be. Yes, Lord. Glory, Thank to you, glory, glory to your name. Changed. I pray that there has been a revelation. Hallelujah. And 
hearts of your people today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Covered under the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Glory to God. And we worship you, Lord. We give you great honor and glory. Thank you for your timely word and message, O oh God. Hallelujah. Bless us, bless us to continue to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you. You are mighty God. You are part of your glory. You are liar, Lord. Take part of your glory. In the name of Jesus. Take part in your glorious victories, O God. Hallelujah. Who spoken of yes. today. That was spoken on this Zoom yes, conference, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We receive the victory right now. Through Christ Jesus. That whatever it is we are going through, we are victorious. You are mighty we walk as lions. The head of the pride, oh God, with our heads up high, a righteous God. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you glory. I give you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift you up, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We defeat the enemy every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God. We triumph in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Honor him with your decisions. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, now you, you know. Hallelujah. Honor the word of God. Hallelujah. With your actions and your personal life. Personal honor him. Honor him not just when people are looking. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Honor him even when no one sees. Hallelujah. Amen. Honor him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus. We pray that you bless Glory to God. Jesus. We know Jesus. that God has spoken. And as as Pastor and Lady Johnson, they have a tradition of doing. Is there anyone, glory to your name, that has any feedback? Would you do you have a testimony? Do you have a feedback that you would like to share with someone or all of us that you've gained from the word today? Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Good afternoon again. Um, well, I believe that this particular word uh, seems right on time because it has been something that I've been praying about, about my boldness. Um, I mean, not just not only in, in, in my normal life, I'm not really the most, I'm more of a reserved person, right? But I mean, I've always, I felt the, the, the need to be more bold in things of God, right? And I mean, in the last, um, when it was Wednesday, when I, I said that sometimes, I mean, I could pray by myself, right? But sometimes when you're, you're, you're amongst people, um, I don't know, it just, I get reserved. I'll get timid, right? And I think this word was very timely. I, I mean, in my life as well, right? Um, about being a little more bold and about manifesting the, 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 the lion, so to speak, in my life, right? And I'm really grateful. I'm, give God all the glory for this word and for um, using you to, to bring that, to confirm what I've been thinking and what I've been experiencing in my life. And I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for it. Thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um. <laughs> Pastor AJ, when you called me yesterday, I had no idea what word you were going to have today. But man, oh man, like this, this, this word deserves, like, you have to listen to it about three or four times to really get the full context of what the Lord is trying to convey here. 
Um, I, this was right on time. You know, um, in my life personally, I'm the youngest in my family. And so, you know, when you're the youngest, it's almost like when you're sitting around a table or whatever, you know, you feel that I've been made in my family to feel like my opinion never mattered. And I wonder if that was because I was the youngest. I was born premature, one pound, 13 ounces. And so it was almost like, uh, you don't have to pay attention to what you say. You don't know nothing yet, you know, blah, 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 you know? And so those things stuck with me growing up and everything. So I, I always felt like my opinion didn't matter. So, but I had very strong opinions about certain things, but whenever I voiced them, like you, you said, you know, um, I, I was always, because I felt strong about certain things, I always was kind of like took the, the um took the uh the gas off the pedal, so to speak. So I didn't like speak up about things and be when I should have, and you know, it would just pass over. But then sometimes it would come out, but then it would be, it would be perceived as um it wouldn't be perceived you know accordingly because it wasn't it wasn't it didn't come out when it was supposed to and so like this message is very very important to me because i'm i'm, I'm seeing like okay the holy spirit is saying when, when it went when, when it pertains to the things of god it's not something where if you're speaking on it you're not in a position where you don't know what you're talking about, you know? And so don't let that fear come over you and speak the things of God boldly when they need to be spoken of because you are under the grace and authority of my protection to do so. God is giving us the authority to speak these things on his name because we have been growing here in this ministry week in and week out. So we, we, cannot, we cannot hold to the fear. We have to understand and know that um, God and the Holy Spirit will, will, will give us the confidence, will give us the words to speak, and will give us the, the clarity when, when that time comes to, to, to step into that role, to step in and be the mouthpiece. You know, for someone, like you said, intercede on behalf of, because there's many people who don't, who don't know what to do in these times. You know, I think God has been, has been is grooming us to, to step up on behalf of the people as ambassadors, as men and women of Christ to, to go forth for them and to, and to intercede on them. Just the way Moses had to, had to stand before God for the whole house of Israel. That's terrifying. But who else is gonna do the job? And God said, you know, he 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 honored Moses so much because he went. There was always somebody in Israel who went before the people and represented the people before God. There always and time in and time out, that he always had somebody had to intercede because, you know. It was it was it was a very bold thing, but somebody had to stand up and do it, and had to be the lion amongst the lion, like that 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 is that is that's kind of what we're being called to do with all these things going on in the world. And so this this message was just extremely powerful, power packed message. Like man, if you ever felt like you didn't have the courage. Man, this message is for that because we have we we have got to stand up and stop putting putting ourselves down in the midst of our friends or whatever company we're in. Like if 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 we're if we, we got to be bold in God right now, it's, it's a time of boldness in Christ. It really is, and this is just awesome because I was getting goosebumps because I'm like, man, this hit me. This hit me. This just really hit me really hit me you know i've often felt like okay maybe you don't know what you're talking about 
and I'm going through this with myself. You know, maybe you're not strong enough in your faith, your walk, to even question something or or, or speak on something, and that caused me to 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 play the back seat. But I fully well know, yeah, you should have spoke on that because you are right and what you're you are in right standing with what you want to 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 speak on in this issue. But the boldness, man, it, but I was always afraid and timid because I never wanted to come off. I didn't want what I, I'm speaking to be perceived wrong. I was worried about what men would think, what people would think of me, you know, more so of just um, bringing out the word of God. You know, I don't know if they call that in the Bible people pleasers or but I was also always worried about the perception because I was, you know, const it's something that I had to deal with, you know, my whole life, you know, as, um, you know, having a valued opinion in, 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 in the mix of my family and such. So this, 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 was, this was awesome. And I, 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 this is confirmation for me to proceed with, with with the word of God and 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 bring it out. Yep. Exactly. So I just want I just want to say thank you and glory to God. Amen. Glory to thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I must agree Amen. too. Like this is a word. I'm telling you, like this is a word from God, and um, I I know that you were speaking to me because. I'm I'm a, I'm the type of person that is like you know sometimes timid you know, and I'm always saying okay, um, but is Jesus like this you know if I act this way or you know be angry or be you know I'm saying no humility 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 you know but we forget about the lion part you know and um. I mean, um, that's something that I'm going to have to, you know, pray about, work on, because this word, I needed this, you know, this is for me, definitely. Thank you for that. Amen. You see, we're living in a world where right is wrong and wrong is right. And if we know right, God is calling us to be that light. He, he wants us to be that light. And sometimes our lion may just be by living by example, by living by example, by, by standing up for what you believe in, by clearly just doing what you're supposed to do. When everybody else is going left, you're declaring, you're saying, nope, I'm, I'm, I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm going to go right. Sometimes it's just as simple as that, as simple as that. And God, he's really calling us there because we are Amen. living in very dark times and it, it's a very huge gray shaded area of what is right and what is wrong and he's asking us he's pleading with us to stand up for what is right Amen. Amen. and the world shows it as gray but in the bible it's clear what's right and what's wrong so oftentimes the confusion is it's not of god Amen. you know scripture says god is not the author of confusion it's not of god Hallelujah. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wish to say something or speak? Sister Jodette, Sister Vivette, we want to hear from you. Thank you for joining today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also have Sister Vivette. Thank you for joining. I don't know if you have anything you'd want to say. Jesus. All right. All right. We praise the Lord for them. And so at this time, we're going to be collecting an offering. Do we collect offering today? Uh, so Sister Roxanne is going to put it up in the chat. Perfect. And she I, has an I just want to say this morning, this afternoon, excuse me, that it is Clergy Appreciation Month. And if you have not already given your pastor and your first lady a token of appreciation, oh. All of the month of October, you should, you know, think of something, maybe yeah. when you give a little more, you just to say thank you, you know, may, maybe send an email and a card of encouragement, Amen. maybe, you know, just give a random phone call and not ask for anything, just say thank you. Yeah. 
just if, say thank you. And if you want to give a special offer, and I'm pretty sure in with PayPal or Cash App, you can put a note. So if you want it specifically for past appreciation, if you want to just appreciate them, just put that in the note so they will know to separate it. Amen. Amen. So I'm I'm sure she sister Roxanne has already um put it in there. Hallelujah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. The PayPal information is there. So there's PayPal, there's Easy, Easy Tide, Tide, Cash App, and you can also mail it in. So it's all in the chat. Yeah. If you scroll up, it's in the chat. Um, we before we say the benediction, we just want to thank you for joining the Binghamton Church once again. We believe that this ministry is a powerful ministry. We want you to continue to pray for our pastor and first lady as they've taken this week off to rest. And um, if, as we go, I just want you to know that God is in the midst. Amen. If there's anyone who's feeling discouraged today, just know that God is a problem solver. God is a healer. God Amen. is a provider. If there's Amen. someone who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and you would like to talk to us or, you know, maybe talk to Pastor Milton next week, just let us know in the chat. You can let us know privately, but we want to make sure that we leave. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. We want to leave Lucky, no stone unturned. So if you don't know Christ and you would like to receive salvation today, please let us know. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And as my husband comes, he's going to do the benediction. Praise the Lord. 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 All right. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord have his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and give you his peace this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, spending time with you guys. We'll be back on Wednesday and on Sunday as usual. It looks like Sister Angie's driving. Hey, Sister Angie. Lady Johnson, Hi. how are you? Hi. How are you? I keep I'm trying to keep I'm trying to get on for I don't know how long now. I'm trying to get on. Wait a minute. Yeah. I said I don't know how long. Hold on. I don't know if you can see us. Yeah, we can see you. We can see you both. Oh, okay. God bless. Is the service finished? Yeah, so we just did the benediction. Yeah. Uh, but it's not over yet. You are now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad. I really can't see everybody and let you talk. So I can see Brother Christian. I just heard you. Hi, good everybody good else on? Good yeah, everyone else is still on. Oh, yeah. bless God. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> okay, I see Brother Chaikel. Nice headphones. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm, I'm sure you guys were blessed by the service. I'm sure, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. We are, we are sure. So appreciative. Oh, I wish you guys were so close that we give everybody a big hug. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. On. Does anybody know if Jamacy's still on? Am I moving? Uh, oh shoot! Oh, I have. We have to. We have to get somebody to stop the the recording on the Zoom. How do you answer this phone? No, AJ has. I gave him hope. Oh, he does. Hello, <laughs> Chelsea. Can you go in the library and go to the laptop and? and press stop record on the Zoom meeting, please. Okay, uh, call me back on Daddy's phone, bye. Um, so, I don't know what to say. You don't Troy? Just fine, wherever.
I don't know what to say, but we're just glad to see y'all. Did Roxanne leave already? Well, God bless you both. We can okay. say that. I'm still God here. God bless you both. Hi, Roxanne. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You are oh, so God. welcome. You guys, 